Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Nurul Umi Umarah binti Yaakob And my metric number is 121-2369 uh, My group members and I will present a topic about special court for rulers Okay first, I want to state the definition of the special court Okay, what is meaning of the special court? Special court is a court that created or established for a specific and temporary purpose such as a commission to try alleged war criminals or a tribunal to hear claims uh, for war damages against a state by nationals of the Victoria state. Okay, now let's move to the introduction of the special court. As we know, special court is a court which were created by Congress to hear specific type of cases. Sometimes it's called legislative courts. They include the court of military appeals, the claims court, the tax court, and the territorial courts. At first, the special court was created by a way of amendment to the Federal Constitution Amendment Act 1993, which came into force on March 30, March 30 1993. It means the Special Court was established by amending the Federal Constitution Amendment Act 1993 which took effect on March 30, 1993. Second, the Special Court was established to try all civil suits and criminal cases that broke against the Yang Dipertuan Agung, which is our king, or against the ruler of a state in their personal capacity, which means the special court was formed to hear all civil and criminal complaints that made against the Yang Dipertuan Agung, which is our king, or a state's ruler in their individual capacity. Next, the Federal Constitution broke two fundamental changes to the law. First, the Constitution effectively removed the absolute immunity of the Yang Dipertuan Agung and the rulers of the states from civil as well as criminal prosecutions for acts or omissions that committed by them in their personal capacity. It means the Federal Constitution made two significant amendments uh, to the law. The Constitution essentially removed the Yang Dipertuan Agung and the state's ruler of absolute immunity from civil and criminal penalties for crimes or omissions that made in their personal capacity. Uh, and then, uh, the amendment established a special forum to deal with civil suits and criminal cases that broke against the Yang Dipertuan Agung or the rulers of the states in their personal capacities. It means the amendment created a special court to hear civil and criminal cases that made against the Yang Dipertuan Agung or the state rulers in their individual capacity. Okay, now we move to the establishment of the special court. Okay, first, the Article 182 Clause 1 of the Federal Constitution provides that there shall be a court which shall be known as the special court and shall consist of the Chief Justice of the Federal Court, who shall be the Chairman, the Chief Judges of the High Courts, and two other persons who hold or have held office as a judges of the federal court or a high court that appointed by the conference of rulers. Uh, which means the special court shall be composed of the chief justice of the federal court who shall serve as a chairman, the chief judges of the high courts and two other people that selected by the conference of rulers who hold or have held office as a judges of the federal court or a high court. Second, in the Article 182 Clause 2 of the Federal Constitution provides that any procedures that taken by or against the Yang Dipertuan Agung or a state ruler in his personal capacity will be heard by a special court created under Clause 1. Before this, two amendments was made. No proceeding can be brought in any court against the Yang Dipertuan Agung or the ruler of a state in his personal capacity. Uh, the chairperson of the special court shall be chief justice of the federal court together with the chief judges of the high courts and two other persons who hold or have held office as the judges of the supreme court or a high court that appointed by the conference of rulers. Okay, 
the special court has exclusive jurisdiction to try all offences that committed in the federation by the Yang Dipertuan Agong or the ruler of estates and all civil cases by or against the Yang Dipertuan Agong or the ruler of states, notwithstanding where the cause of action arise. The court should have the same jurisdictions and powers as are vested in the lower courts, the supreme courts and high courts. Okay, that's all from my presentation. Thank you very much. We move to the next presenter. Next, let's talk about the jurisdiction of the special court for rulers. Before that, my name is Nur Aisha binti Muhammadur Arif and my metric number 1212366. First and foremost, the jurisdiction of the special court for rulers can be referred to Article 182, Clause 3 of the Federal Constitution. Article 182, Clause 3 provides that the Special Court shall have the exclusive jurisdiction to try all offences committed in the Federation by the Yang Dipertuan Agong or the ruler of a state and all civil cases by or against the Yang Dipertuan Agong or the ruler of a state notwithstanding where the cause of action arose. Next, Article 182 Clause 4 of the Federal Constitution provides that the Special Court shall have the same jurisdiction and powers as are vested in the Inferior Court, the High Court and the Federal Court by this Constitution or any Federal Law and shall have its registry in Kuala Lumpur. Later come the explanation for both articles. First, the phrase of exclusive jurisdiction means that other civil or criminal court have no jurisdiction to hear the cases against the rulers. Second, only cases that involving the Yang Dipertuan Agong or a state's ruler are heard by the special court. Third, the court will have the same jurisdiction as the lower court the High Court and Supreme Court. Furthermore, the Special Court has been created to try all cases by or against the Yang Dipertuan Agong and the rulers. So, the Highness cannot be dragged to the ordinary court. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So I will be continuing from the previous presenter to present. My name is Baratul Kizran binti Muhammad Sani. My metric number is one two one two three six three. The topic that I will be discussing today is about the power of the special court. It is fall under the article. 182 clause 4 of the federal constitution which it provides that the special court shall have the same jurisdiction and power as are vested in the inferior court such as the high court and the federal court by this constitution or any federal law and shall have its registry in Kuala Lumpur. Therefore, we could say that the special court has the same jurisdiction and power as the high court and also the federal court. So, in this slide, I will be explaining about the court procedure in the special court, which I refer um, to two provisions. The first one is Article 182, Clause 5 of the Federal Constitution. And the second one, uh, that it must be read together with the previous article that I just mentioned earlier, which is the Article 182, Clause 5 of the Federal Constitution, which the second uh, provision is Rule 14A of the Rules of Supreme Court 1994, which it is came into force on August 6, 2010. So, in this slide, I will be explaining about the first provision that I just mentioned earlier, which is uh, the Article 182 plus 5 of the Federal Constitution. As stated in the slide that the article provides, until Parliament by law makes special provision to the contrary in respect of procedure, including the hearing of proceeding in camera, in civil or criminal cases, and the law regulating evidence and proof in civil and criminal proceeding. The practice and procedure applicable in any proceeding in any inferior court, any high court, and the federal court shall apply in any proceeding in the special court. 
In conclusion for this article, it state that the practice and procedure of special court proceeding must be like in any other court, any other inferior court which is the high court and the federal court. Therefore, the special court proceeding must be open to the public and media. And also, under the same article, only parliament can make law to have special court proceeding either it is held in private or in camera. So, the next is the provision that I will be explaining is the second one which is the Rule 14A of the RSC 1994 which uh, sub rule 1, it is stated that notwithstanding any written law or rules of court and subject to sub rule 20 clause 1, the hearing of any proceeding in the special court shall be in camera. Sub rule 2 stated that subject to any direction by the special court, all documents filed in the special court shall be confidential. Therefore, all documents should not be published publicly. So, the next one is sub rule 3 of uh, rule 14A of the RSC 1994. It is stated that no person shall be present at any setting of a special court except these three category, which is in paragraph A, it is the members and officer of the special court itself. In paragraph B, it is the parties involved in the case before the special court. The second one is the advocates and the third one is the witnesses and the fourth one for this paragraph is the other person that directly concerned in that case and in paragraph C that it is stated that the person that the special court may especially authorize to present which means that the special court may ask for someone and oblige them to present during the proceeding. So, in this slide, I will be explaining the next sub rule, which is sub rule 4 for the rule 14A of the RSC 1994. It is stated that there shall be no mass media report or any publication, for instance, in any newspaper, book, magazine, or any uh, transmission through any electronic medium, including the internet, with the exception of the grounds of judgment delivered or any proceeding in a special court whether it is at the pre-trial, trial, or post-trial stage that reveal the name or particular leading to the ident identification of any parties that involved in those proceedings, either it is as the person against or in respect of whom the proceedings are brought. So, in this slide, we still be discussing about the court proceeding in the special court under the Rule 14A of the RSC 1994. Under Sub Rule 5, it is stated that there should be no publication in any newspaper, book or magazine or transmission that through any electronic medium including the internet or any picture of any person that, that involved in the proceeding. However, if the special court convinced that it is for the interest of the justice. Therefore, the special court may dismiss any or all of the requirements of this rule to the extent that it is considered necessary to do so. Therefore, if it is necessary for the interest of justice, therefore the special court may dismiss the requirement. And in the next is the sub rule 6 of this rule. It is explaining the purpose of this rule which is, uh, it has three, which is mass media, publication, and transmission. For the mass media, it is uh, include newspaper, magazine, bulletin, and other periodical publication, as well as television, and radio programs, audiovisual recordings, and also the programs that release for the public to watch. And it is, uh, also includes the internet portal, for instance that we know, it, uh, Facebook and the uh, next one is about the publication publication is it is uh, includes all written or printed matter and everything that whether of a nature similar to written or printed matter or not containing any visible representation or by its form shape or any other 
may na capable of suggesting word or ideas and every copy and reproduction or substantial reproduction of any publication and the last one is the transmission transmission is include that broadcast by the radio or television so the the last one is the sub rule 7 it is explained that if any person who controlling with the sub rule 4 and 5 it may be cited for the content i guess that's all from me thank you Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh My name is Mai Izzat Shazwani Binti Zaidi My number matter is 1212376 For the next slide, I will brief about final decision and proceedings in special court How proceedings are decided and finality of the decision Article 182 Clause 6 of the Federal Constitution states The proceedings in the special court shall be decided in accordance with the opinion of the majority of the members and its decision shall be final and conclusive and shall not be challenged or called in question in any court on any ground. The special court has been conferred with inherent powers under Rule 24 of the RSC 1994 which is similar to Rule 137 of the RFC. It could be argued that the Constitution repeatedly provides that no proceeding whatsoever shall be brought in any court by or against the ruler in his personal capacity except in the special court. Although a decision of the special court cannot be questioned by any court such as the Federal Court, the Court of Appeal or the High Court, Rule 24 of the RSC 1994 does not preclude the special court from reviewing its own decision in an appropriate circumstance. Next, in Article 182 Clause 7 of the Federal Constitution provides, the Yang Di Pertuan Agung may on the advice of the Chief Justice make such rules as he may deem necessary or expedient to provide for the removal of any difficulty or anomaly whatsoever in any written law or in the carrying out of any function, the exercise of any power, the discharge of any duty or the doing of any act under any written law that may be occasioned by this article. And for that purpose, such rules may make any modification, adaption, alteration, change or amendment whatsoever to any written law. From the article, we knew that the special court is not an ordinary civil court. Under Article 182 Clause 7, the King, on the advice of the Chief Justice, may make any adaptation or alteration to the law for the removal of any difficulty. That's all from us. I apologize for any lags in our presentation. Thank you very much for your listening.